very incredible. In the book of, of 2 Peter, in verse, uh, starting with verse 1 through verse 4, I, I've taken this passage of Scripture because it best lays out the story. It best lays out the plan. It best lays out what God wants us to understand. And those of you that have just joined us uh, from around the world in different places, God bless you. We want to welcome you and welcome your families. We hope that we could uh, somehow deposit something into your life and deposit something into your heart that will help you to carry on as I discuss this message or preach this word on incredible, incredible increase. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, and I'll read, Simon Peter, a servant, the Bible says, and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have obtained something. And Paul is identifying himself with those and he's identifying us with himself concerning those that have received this precious faith, the Word of God, obtained like precious faith. And your faith this morning is something that you ought to develop and you ought to build up in your life. You ought not just be a Christian just waiting to die and go to heaven. You ought not just be waiting for the rapture. How I many of you ought to be involved in what God is doing? You ought to say, Father God, involved in my life. Let me be involved with what you're doing in the earth. And I want to do this. And so, so here Peter, excuse me, Peter said that those who have obtained like precious faith, this righteousness that's from God through our Savior, because of our Savior Jesus Christ. Then he says in verse 2, he says, he says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Right there, he gives us something. He said, I want two things to happen in your life. I want you to begin to understand that there's more to Christianity than just existing or just attending church service. There's more to Christianity than just, you know, a lot of people say, well, I, I grew up in the church. I, all my life I was in the church. And then you look at their lives uh, outside, and they're outside of the church. They're outside of Christ. And you wonder how in the world that these people grew up in the church. And if, you, if, and if they did grow up in the church, and they said they did, then you have to then begin to question what kind of church they grew up in. How I many know, you know, you know you don't go to church, not the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and really hear what God is saying and, and, and involve your life just to grow up and backslide, just to grow up and become part of the world, go up, grow up and become part of darkness. No, no, there, there, there's something wrong. Now, I don't know all the schematics of what's wrong in certain churches, and that's not my business. My business is to make those things right in this church. My business is to make these things right to the point where you can develop, and your faith can develop, and you can understand the purpose and the real reason why God has you here at Word of Life Worship Center. He has you here because he is trying to develop in you the things that he has intended for you to walk inside of. And, and so in the Word of God, he says here, he says, Grace and peace. Somebody say that with me. Grace. Grace. Somebody say peace. peace. So there's the shalom, this, this peace of God, nothing broken, nothing missing, nothing out of order would be manifested in your life. How many want a life where the grace and the peace of God is manifested in your life? I mean, every, everywhere you go, people say, man, you sure are lucky. What do you mean I'm lucky? Everything just works out for you. Well, no, it's not luck. It's the grace and peace of God. It's the grace and the shalom of God. Do you know that the, the problem in a lot of folk is that they don't know what God has for them, so they never pursue it. They kind of live the, 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 what we call the normal Christian life. They live a Christian life. They live a life in which things go wrong and never get right, and they wonder, well, I guess this is normal. I guess this is the way I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to suffer for Jesus. How many know you don't have to seek out suffering? It'll find you. If they that live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So you don't have to worry about seeking out suffering. Like, well, I'm just, I'm looking for somebody to persecute me. Well, you don't have to. You know, they'll persecute you just by default if you'll live right. 
That, that's one of the indications. That, no, you must be doing something right when, you know, when people don't uh, uh, necessarily receive you because you're different. And you're not different because you're weird. You're different because you have standards and you have God's standards. And you say, I'm going to live this certain way. I'm going to, I'm going to walk. I'm going to treat everybody this way. I'm going to do and serve in the kingdom this way. I'm going to serve everybody this way. I'm going to do what's right. Oh, come on. You ought to throw your lot in with us and let's talk about her. No, no, I'm not going to talk about her. I'm going to pray for her. Oh, see, now, now you're different. And all of a sudden, people begin to call you names. And they persecuted Jesus. They persecuted the disciples. They persecuted others. They persecuted me. And they surely will persecute you. If you live right for God, if you do what's right before the Lord, they will not, they will not like you. They will persecute you. They will say all manner of evil against you falsely. But God will be rejoiceful in your life because you are doing that. And he will increase. The Bible says he will increase the grace. Now think, of that, think with me for a moment. The grace of God is increased on your life. There's a promotion, and you don't really qualify, but somebody else does. But God will override and bring it around in your favor because the grace of God is multiplied in your life. Now, we can accept the grace of God. How are you saved? I'm saved by grace. And that's the average thing. Well, we're saved by grace, Pastor, and amen. And that's the average grace that everyone stays within because that's a safe zone. But how many understand that a grace in your life Grace in your life, grace in your life can multiply. And if the grace that's good already is that good, how many know you can get good and plenty? How many know that there's more to get of the grace that God offers you? Now, if the grace of God <clears throat> that has washed you and saved you from sin is in your life, it is sufficient. And we can understand that. It is sufficient. But the grace that God wants to put in your life is not just sufficient grace, but multiplied grace. <laughs> multiplied grace. If sufficient grace is good enough, come on, somebody. Yeah. If, it, if it's good enough, imagine what two times that can do. Oh, come on now. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking about that 409 that you spray. Come on now. You spray that 409. That 409 can kill a rat, boy. I'm telling you, that's some strong stuff. You put that 409 on there, and that 409 will do good. It'll clean that spot good. And if it don't get clean, you spray a little bit more, a couple of more sprays. They say one spray is sufficient, but if one spray don't get the job done, do 16 sprays. I'm telling you, get the multiplied spray. How many know the grace of God is good enough? But if you need more grace, you get more grace. God wants to give you more grace. Now listen, he wants to give you, he says, grace and peace, which is shalom which is the peace of God. Not, it means nothing broken, nothing out of order. Very well, very good, over and above, in the abundance. I, I, I say to you, may the, may the peace of God be on you. That means, that means your house is right, your kids are right, even your dog and your cat get right. Come on now. Because the shalom, the peace of God comes on you. No, nothing worse than being a Christian and having no peace. You're a Christian, but have no peace in your life. You say, well, I'm, I know I've been praying. I just don't have any peace. Well, you know, you ought to get some peace. Peace is free. Amen. God offers peace to those. And when you get a little bit of peace, then multiply the peace. Amen. Times at times 60. And just multiply that peace. Unlimited. Let me say it again. Unlimited grace. Unlimited peace. Imagine waking up and you actually like somebody. Amen. Glory to God. It's like, what happened? I don't know. Just peace came on me, and I just, I just, I just like everybody now. Before, I didn't like nobody. Didn't like people. Don't like to be around people. Don't want to talk to people. Can't stand people. But then all of a sudden, something happened to you, and, and the grace and peace of God got on you, and all of a sudden, God began to change you because the grace... And the peace that he talks about here in 2 Peter is going to be multiplied. <clears throat> now, here it is, multiplied through knowledge. So what, what, what are you telling me? Well, I'm, what I'm telling you is if, if, if there's no multiplication in your grace and peace, it's, it's, there's no multiplication because you have an increased knowledge. See, what God said about you as far as God is concerned, is already established. If God says that, that you are more than a conqueror, but you're living a life down here of defeat, 
And you're saying, God, what's, what's wrong with this picture? I, I, you said that I, over here, you said in your word that I was more than a conqueror. But I'm living defeated. I pray and I ask God, I don't understand. All right, well, let's do this thing. The key word was you did not understand. If any man lack knowledge, he said, let him ask of God who give to all men, huh? Liberally. See, even God don't give anything out stingily. He gives it out liberally. He wants you to have the knowledge. He wants you to have an understanding. See, there's a reason why you're in your position. There's a reason why you are stuck where you are stuck. And it's not because God has you there in the old religious cliche that God has you there because he's teaching you something. But you're going through that because God is teaching you something. Well, I believe God can teach us things through things we go through, but I don't believe God necessarily puts us in bad situations so that he can teach us something because he already taught us in his word. All we got to do is believe it and receive it and walk in it. So, so, so th this idea that God is teaching you something through the trials, most of the things that happen and befall unto us is things that we do ourselves and we create for ourselves. And that's all right. God can forgive. God can deliver. God can set you free. But God does not want you and I, listen, listen carefully, does not want you and I to stay where we are. How many know you, even you don't want to stay where you are? Amen. I mean, every, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of you have made New Year's resolutions about going to the gym and, and dieting now and getting on a diet plan. You say, okay, this Monday. <laughs> Come on now, I'm talking to some people who know what I'm talking about. This Monday, I'm going to start my diet. Well, why start a diet? Because I don't want to stay where I'm at. No, God doesn't want you to stay there either. God wants you to multiply God wants you to increase because when you multiply and you increase, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. When a man or woman multiplies in something, they want to do what with it? They want to share it with everybody. Man, I got this new thing that I've been drinking and it takes the hair off my hand. All right, good. Now you tell me, how can I drink the same thing and get the hair off my hand? You know, now I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that you actually have hair in your hand. But what I'm saying is whenever we find a good thing, we want to tell others about it so that we can help others because we have such a multiplication going on. I want you to have this understanding. I want you to understand that God wants to bring into our lives an incredible increase. Okay, not just a little bit now. How I many know a little bit's all nice, a little dab will do you? No, no, let me say it again. God wants to bring into our lives an incredible increase. All right, let's practice that. Turn to somebody and say, God wants to bring into your life an incredible, an incredible increase. Now, give the Lord a shout. Come on, give him a shout. So, so, so we have to have this mindset if we don't have this mindset, we get stuck on the plateau. We get stuck on this plateau that we have arrived here, and this is, this is good, and I can get through this, and when I get to heaven, it'll be better. You know, that, that's, a, that, that's nice. But that's not what God wants. He talks about multiplication because the kingdom of God is in itself about multiplication. Jesus did not save and call his 12 disciples, and one of them was betrayed him. He didn't call them and say, well, we lost Judas, but whoo, we got you 12 saved, and that's all right. He told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because God expects an incredible increase. God wants you to think every day, increase. How do I increase myself? How do I increase my walk with God? See, if you don't increase your walk with God, if you don't increase yourself as a human being, you get bored with God and you get bored with self. And when you're bored with self, you start doing weird stuff. You start saying, well, I'm going to go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shave all my hair off my head or I'm going gonna, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go buy a, a toupee for my chest or, 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 or something like that. And, and, and you begin to do weird stuff <clears throat> because you're not satisfied with who you are, right? And, and then you, you start thinking, well, I'm going to get my hairstyle into a mohawk or I'm going to do something, take my eyebrows off and do something. I'm going to do something. I'm bored. We have a generation that's bored in life. So they go out and they buy, and I'm not uh, against anybody here having it, but they go out and buy contact lenses, colors for their eyes. They're bored. With, you know, you look at people. Uh, you know, I, I saw somebody one time on the cruise ship. My wife and I were there. And this girl, she comes up, and she was from, I think she was from Indonesia. And she comes up, and she serves us. Say, is anything else? You know how they talk. You say anything else you want? I said, no, no, everything. You want some iced tea? You want this, want that? No, no, no. And then when she walked away, I told my wife, I said, Some, something's wrong with her eyes. And she goes, what do you mean? I said, her eyes are all black. They're just one whole black. You know, most people have a pupil. This has just black. So she comes back around. I said, I'm going to ask him seriously. Don't, don't ask. I said, I ask anything. <laughs> I don't mind asking stuff. I'm going to ask her. I ain't going to sit there and gossip about it. I'm going to ask her about it. Amen. You come over here, you're serving me with them weird looking eyes. I'm going to ask you about those weird looking eyes. I said, what's wrong with your eyes? She goes, well, I said, your eyes are awfully black and awfully big, you know. Remind me of the three bears, you know, oh, you know. These eyes are for eating, you know, whatever, you know. And so I asked her, I said, what's wrong? I said, what's with your, your eyes? And she goes, oh, my God, oh, my God, you don't like it? I said, no, it's not we don't like it. What, what is it? She goes, I have the contact lenses. I have these, these black, uh, not contacts, but just colors. And you, think, well, you think, well, why do people do that? Well, people do that because they're bored. They're bored with life. They got to find something to do. So they get so bored, they start taking selfies. <laughs> this is a generation that's bored. You know why they're bored? They're bored because they're either lost or they're bored because they're saved, but they're not increasing. So, in the Word of God, it says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge. <clears throat> that means the Word of God, the understanding of the Word of God and of Jesus our Lord. According, in verse 3, as His divine power have given unto us some things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the what? Knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. Jesus, the word of God says that God has called you to glory and virtue. Oh, when, when, when they touched the hem of Jesus, the woman's touched, Jesus stopped and said, oh, virtue has gone out of me. See, the glory of God and the presence of God, the virtue of God wants to increase inside of your life so that you can multiply the kingdom to helping the families in the earth. How many understand the term when Jesus said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive? Amen. A lot of times people say, I always ask that question. It's like a trivia question. I ask the question, I say, how many of you would like to be a receiver or a giver? And a lot of people say, I like to be a receiver. I like receiving money and gifts and all that. But, you know, and, and that's okay. You know, that's not a, it's not a good or bad answer. It's not a trick question. But the fact of it is that a, a receiver is always saying, come on, throw it to me. Throw it. Come, come on, throw it to me. A, a, a giver has always got control of it. I would rather be a giver. I would rather, here I go, here I go, here I go. I would rather be a giver, and I would, now, now we're just going to make it monetary just for a moment, so don't you get all critical about that, you're talking about money again. <laughs> I, would be, I would rather be able to write a check to you as a family member, a, a personal family, and say, here's a check for $200,000 to pay off your house. Yeah. And not go, D don't cash it to Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> How many, how many understand the, the difference, huh? And wouldn't you just like to be able to help people? You see somebody's broken down on the side of the road and the car is steaming and you just, you just feel God on this thing. You say, well, how long you had this old beat up jalopy? Oh, this is the only thing I can afford. I can't afford. And you say, come on, 
I'm going to take you to the car dealership and go buy them cash, a car, and not walk away thinking about, okay, that should, I should be able to do that. It won't hurt me. See, see, a giver has an increase net by which he or she could do something that others can benefit from. And the kingdom of God that God wants you to walk inside of is the type of kingdom that's so multiplied in your life that when you go to pray for someone that you don't come away from there talking about, ooh, I'm exhausted now. I can't hardly stand on my feet. I've given out all the anointing. How many know that there needs to be an increase? So when we stop and think of these words, grace is multiplied and peace is multiplied, that God wants the church to have an incredible increase. He says here, virtue, verse 5, whereby are given unto who? Us, the church, exceeding. This is beyond measure. This is beyond limitations. This is beyond borders. That God will give you an exceeding great and precious promises. Exceeding <clears throat> great and <clears throat> precious promises. Now, excuse me. A lot of folk in the church don't know anything about this. They're just kind of waiting to die. Well, I'm just waiting to Jesus come. How you doing, Mama? Well, I'm just, just holding on to God's unchanging hand. Just waiting for the angel of the Lord to show up. Listen, they never know about the exceeding greatness and precious promises of God because they never heard about it. Nobody ever told them about it. And he says here, exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. You mean to tell me that I could receive an increase to the point where I am a partaker of God's divine nature? Exactly. How many know you walk in, in the kingdom of God, you walk as representatives or ambassadors of his glory? And his virtue flows through you. His anointing flows through you. And the works that I do, you can do also. And greater works than these shall you do, because greater is he that's inside of you. And there's no weapon formed against you that can stop you. And, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I can receive my, all my needs will be supplied and met. Because when I walk in the anointing, I walk in the same virtue, the same anointing that Jesus walked in. And, and when I walk inside of that anointing, I make a difference on a common level. When I say common level, you know, if we all on a common level, we say, well, I'm going through hard times. Oh, me too. Things are rough. They sure are rough in my house. How I many know after a while, you can't help anybody. You just, you just sit there and just feel sorry for each other. <laughs> and that would be your ministry, just feeling sorry for each other. How, well, how are you doing? I'm going through it. So am I. How's your wife? Oh, I don't know about it. She's getting weird. <laughs> so is my wife. So is my husband. You see what I'm saying? These are commonalities. But when we receive a multiplication, when we increase, we're able to be a benefactor and benefit to others and to help others to get out of their problems. Somebody come up to you in a supermarket and say, oh, I'm just going, I just have so much pressure on my head and pressure in my body, don't know what to do. You don't go, well, you come to church and Pastor Miller will lay hands. No, no, no. You right there take that same anointing that increase anointing, oh yeah. You say, Mama, park your cart right here. Hang on a second. And just take your hands and just say, shang I mean, just grab a hold of her. I always pray for them like that. Pull them in the ear. They can't get away. Just pray for them. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do that. But I pray for them. <laughs> and believe God. And they walk away and they say, man, I feel different. Why? Because I have taken the multiplication of what I am to walk inside of and I have deposited into other people. And now I'm fulfilling God's purpose. I'm not just a church attendee. I have purpose in life, and my purpose in life is that I can find a way to step into incredible 
increase. Oh, I wish somebody would give God a shout one time. Just shout, hallelujah. Now, so he said that I could be a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world. It's the lack of knowledge that brings destruction to our families. How many believe that? It's the lack of knowledge. It's what I don't know that hurts my family. You know, a dad or a mom can have good intentions and still their kids can go to hell. And you can meet them there. Talking about, Dad, why didn't you lead me in the way of life? Well I, well, I just tried to provide for you. Bring home the bacon. And you see, good intentions, they say, is paved. Hell's road is paved with good intentions. So we've got to get out of this mentality in the church because we have the knowledge. Because the knowledge is the power. And the power brings the increase. And when we have the knowledge, we bring uh, increase and grace upon our lives. And so here it is. So he, he takes us in the Word of God, and he would talk about destruction to our families for the lack of knowledge. Do you know how many, uh, my, my wife and I have been around pastoring this church for uh, close to 30, uh, 29, 30 years. And we have seen a generation grow up. I mean, they, they were born, and now they're 30 years old. And, 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 you know, here, here's the thing that, 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 that hurts us is that we have pleaded. Are you hearing the word? We have pleaded with families, bring your kids to church. Oh, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave them at home. They don't want to come. I don't know in the book of parenting, where well, your kid had a choice. Right. What do you mean? They don't want to come. Give them an incentive to want to come. <laughs> but these parents have this idea, this weird demonic idea, that I want to be a friend of my kids. And I don't want to force them. But you force them to eat green stuff. You force them to go to school. You force them to lock the door. You force them to respect you. You force them to honor you. But you won't force them to serve God. The devil gives you that old lame excuse that you don't force your kids. So what's happened in our 30 years, we have seen a generation whose parents never forced their kids to come to church. And now their kids are hidden toward hell as adults. And the parents are telling my wife and I, can you pray? No, we can't pray. Prayer is over. You need a miracle. Because the Bible says, train a child in the way he should go when he's young. I mean, you don't try to train a, 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 an adult. I'm not going to, I'm going to train, I'm going to train you. First thing that happens when I try to train an adult, they get offended. Don't be telling me how to live. I'm grown. <laughs> All right. We won't go down that road. I won't tell you how to live. You know, like some of you this morning probably got mad. I'm, I'm late coming to church. How are you going to tell me I'm late? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you grown. And when you're on the wrong path and, and cross heaven looking at me to my pastor, help me. I said, no, you grown. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you who to sock it to. You grown. I'm just talking to people who want to be taught. And so we do our best, Pastor Sarah and I, we do our best, have done our best over the years to try to help you to understand the principles of multiplication. You, and and are those who have brought their kids to church and those who obey the kids are growing and living for God. That's an amazing thought, isn't it? So let's look at something. God always wanted you and I, always wanted you and I to, to train our children in his word because the knowledge of the word helps us. Look at the book of Hosea with me. Hosea, the fourth chapter. And in the Hosea, the fourth chapter, I want you to, I want you to see something with me. It says in verse 6 through verse 9, my people are destroyed for what? 
said out loud. For what? So let's read it again. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You mean that they're, they're not destroyed because the, the church was mean? They're not destroyed because the preacher didn't preach a good message? They're not destroyed because the teachers didn't teach a good lesson? No, they're, they're destroyed, he says, because of the lack of knowledge, which indicates to you and I that whenever the devil can, can give us a, a lack of knowledge. So I, I saw this commercial recently that comes on TV, maybe some of you have seen it, where this commercial comes on and he's got this real sexy voice and she, said, she says, I want you to read the Bible scriptures where you can fall asleep to. And I'm like, oh, you devil. How many know the Bible's not so you can read it so you can fall asleep? How many know the Bible so you can pay attention to it, amen, and follow the instructions that the reason why you're in trouble is because you keep falling asleep every time you read the Bible. <laughs> they used to say, it's a devil, it's a demon with, 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 with sleepy dust over, over, ain't no demon in my house in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Uh, we cast that thing out a long time ago. My people perish, my church perishes, my, my, my Israel perishes. All the people of God perish because of lack of knowledge. And God was rebuking the priests who had the responsibility to, to speak the word of God and to get people to a situation. The churches today are scared to talk about certain political topics. Where else are they going to hear the truth? They're not going to hear it from the government. Not going to hear from social groups and, that have an uh, interest in these things. They will hear it from the Word of God. So, so here in Hosea, he says, Because thou hast rejected knowledge. You know what a rejected knowledge is? It is someone tells you to do something, this is how you should do it, and you go, I don't want to hear it. I can do it the way I want to do it. And uh, so basically, what that is, is a rejection of knowledge. Hey, you know, you, you bro. You should treat your wife a little bit different than that. You should be more gentle. Don't tell me. That's my woman. Right? And she get mad and hit him upside the head. And he come up, Pastor, he hit me. I said, no, that's your woman. Amen. <laughs> she the one. I like a woman like that who hits you upside the head. No, I'm just kidding. So <laughs> what I'm saying is, ladies, I'll give you instruction how to treat your husband. You could say, thank you, but no thank you. Or you could say, I received that, Pastor. And so the Word of God says, because thou hast rejected knowledge. Now, he says, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. God says, I don't care what, who've entitled you and who's ordained you. I don't care what garment you wear. You're not going to be my priest. That's what God is saying here. God is rebuking here because this, this priesthood did not tell the truth of the knowledge of God so that the knowledge of God can help people to get free. You know, priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Now, there's where he, he tells us, child of God, listen, you got to be careful. Parents, you have young children, be careful to keep them in church. Amen. Don't give them the option to stay home. Amen. Well, my son didn't want to come. Wake him up. My mama used to wake us up. We don't want to go to church. She goes, you get up. When I come back in here, you better be up. <laughs> Was your mama like that? <laughs> you better be up. You come back in there, we're up, and, and you get dressed. We're going to be in church. Church starts at 11 o'clock. I turn to my brother and say, I don't want to go to church. I don't, and we, we're complaining as we're putting on the shoes and, you know, <laughs> don't want to go to church. Mama made me go to church. Get down in that preacher up there in that church I went to over there by the freeway here in San Diego uh, uh, was preaching. And he get up there and go, I want to say the law. Oh, good God Almighty. Help me, Jesus, somebody know the way. Yeah. And I'm like, I look at my brother, I say, I don't want to be here in church. <laughs> and we were mumbling about something, about we were complaining, you know. Then somebody get up and want to take up an offering. You know, and, 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 and the Baptist church, they take up two and three or four offerings, you know. <laughs> take a, a fish fry offering and take a, a, <laughs> take a, a, a benevolence offering and, 
Take a pastoral appreciation offering. And <laughs> oh, bless that pointy little heads. And, uh, you know, I take up all these offerings. I was complaining about it. I was saying something about that offering. And my mother looked over at me, and she just said to me, you better be quiet. Like, like you know. You know, we know what that means. <laughs> that means I, I, I'm going to kill you when I get you. When I get out from among these people so they don't think I'm crazy, I'm going to... You know, didn't you? You had certain looks, huh? You just look, you know, that, that looked like. And so I inherited those looks, and I gave them to my kids. I go. <laughs> and we were complaining about something, and Mama just reached over and just pow. I mean, right in the middle of the praise. Oh, praise the Lord, pow. How? She knew who to hit. She hit the preacher. Amen. And God turned me into a preacher. All right. So, so he says, you'll forget your children. Verse 7 says, as they were increased, so they sinned against me. See, because the, the, the children didn't get the knowledge because the knowledge was not given. The children became rebellious and they increased in sin. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they set their hearts on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. God was angry with the doings of the priests for withholding the truth that could free the people of God. God is angry with the church today that do not preach the word of the Lord. Yes. Trying to preach palms and make people feel good. You know, you don't have to make people feel bad to preach the word. I'm just saying that sometimes to hear truth. Don't like it, especially if it affects their life personally. I've had people sit here in this church over the years. I preached the word of God about a certain subject, and they were like, amen, until they found out their kids were like that. And then they got man left the church. And I'm like, wow, what happened there? And she no longer, they no longer, he no longer wanted to receive the word. And this is where we have to be careful. The knowledge of God, the knowledge of God, let me say this, the knowledge of God is the way to the blessings of increase. Okay, so think with me for a moment. This photograph is like the church in many respects. It's like the church. People in church, but they don't want to hear it through their grace and they put the So wherever the word of God's not increasing, then you'll never have peace until you understand this, the truth of what God says. The book of Acts, turn with me, the book of Acts, the sixth chapter, verse 1 through 8. It says, in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in daily administration. Then the twelve called multitudes of disciples unto them and said, it is of God serve tables. Now, this is what uh, I think you can hear the message of the Lord in this word here, that we got to be very careful. We can serve the people. We can serve tables. We can serve human needs. But that cannot be what we become. Only a church where people can come and get stuff. Oh, our church is packed. Why? Because we're giving away bikes and prizes and money and we, you know, and today, whose winner is going to be today? Your church will be packed. You know, thousand bucks for a lucky member. Well, you, be, well, people be coming up in here talking about I'm the lucky member, and be fighting up in here, and they'll come to this church, amen. As long as you're giving away some money, or you're giving away a bike, or a refrigerator, or a new car, or a computer, 
And I'm not saying we can't do that. I'm just simply saying we cannot become that type of community church where that's what we do to get increase. We cannot say, well, we're, we're not going to preach any political. We're not going to preach anything controversial. We're just going to make you feel good. That's danger. How many remember that movie, Lost in Space? Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. <laughs> we cannot do that. We must preach the word of the Lord. For the Lord of the Lord is what's going to set people free. So here, the Bible says they couldn't leave the table to serve. Verse 3 says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, of whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Procuris, and Nicanor, and Timon, and, and uh, Primarians, Nis and Nicholas, a proselyte, proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And watch what happened. And the word of God, what did it do? It increased. And the number of disciples, what? Multiplied. Where? In Jerusalem, how? Greatly. Multiplication greatly increases come when we allow the word of God to have its free course. And a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of the faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 40 to 47. And when the other words, and, when, and, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, say, save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. How many souls? 3,000. And they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, which is the word, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. What an incredible thing that there was such a wealth, there was such a, 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 an increase in the church that people begin to realize and evaluate what life was really all about. How many know your life is not based upon the consistency of things you possess? It's not based upon how many of this you have, how many cars you got, how many TVs you got. It's not based upon that. Your life, you got health, you got strength, you got remnant, you got food, you got family. Now, if I don't have anything else, I would not rather have a TV, a nice car, a lot of money, but no friends, no family, and no food, and no health. But I got money. Well, I got a car. See, the most valuable things in life, the church of Jerusalem understood and they said, we have so much. And they parted them things. Now, you know, a lot of times we have to, people read this and think this is some kind of weird commune thing where everybody needs to come together and give away their stuff. No, no, that's not what happened here. The Bible says, goes on and says, and they continued uh, in the temple, according to the, te in the temple, uh, breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. That means that by giving away their stuff, they did not come to a place of depression. There was something that happened. There was some joy of being a giver, and they gave themselves, and they gave their lives to the Lord. Praising God, verse 47, and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added what? To the church, what? Daily, daily, such that should be saved. We need to expect, we need to expect an incredible increase in our church, in our lives, in our ministry here, in every area of our life as there is an increasing of God's word daily. This is why we encourage you to get into the Bible with us for one year. I think it'll bless you. I think it'll increase you. Some of you say, well, I, I just need to get stronger. Want to get stronger? Read the Bible with us through a year. We got them out there. You can order them things, get there, get into a care group, and so on. Jesus says in, in John the 8th chapter, verse 22, 32, he says these words, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Jesus says in chapter 8, verse 36, he said, If the Son, therefore, uh, shall make you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. The Holy Spirit's greatest desire today is that each of us step into the grace and into the peace that God has for us, the shalom of God that he has for us, that we would ha find that incredible place that God wants us to have. Through God's knowledge, we open all the doors of heaven, all the doors of increase, and all the doors that he gives to us. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16 says these words, and that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. 
that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with what? All the fullness of God. And then he says in verse 20, And now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask a thing, according to the power that worketh in us. What power is working in you? The power of God's knowledge. The power of God's word. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. This is the age. Amen. Throughout all ages, without end. Amen. Now let me just give you one last understanding. Incredible or exceeding abundance is this is what the dictionary says. According to Webster's Dictionary, 1828 Dictionary, it says, exceeding abundantly is to a very great degree, in a degree beyond what is usual. Greatly, much, very much, and so on. So God, how many see that God wants to increase you and increase the anointing in your life. How many believe that God wants to increase the anointing in your life? How many want God to increase relationships in your life? How many want God to increase your health in this world? How many want God to increase your, your, your finances? Say amen. How many want God to increase your walk with the Holy Spirit? Say amen. All right. So stand up on your feet if you can just for a moment. You that are watching at home somewhere around the world, God bless you. I want you to also join in with us and believe with us that God is going to give you an incredible Increase that you can have an incredible. It is time that we get out in 2020 and start increasing and increasing what, what God wants us to do, increasing our involvement with the kingdom of God, increasing our anointing to help other people, increasing our giving to help reach the world, increasing our serving, amen, serving in the kingdom of God. Some of you say, Pastor Miller, I want to serve in the church during the service times. Uh, I want to do something. If you want to serve in the church uh, and do something here and you're sincere about it, we need you. We have a number of ministries. We've got to get an increase. Why? Because God says if we get, he told me, if we get this increase in these areas, then he can increase the flow. He cannot increase the flow. How many know if our children's ministry is still struggling with this and then somebody come in and we have an extra 300 kids. They couldn't handle that. They'd be running out of here to my, I can't handle that. Right? Our ushers, God bless their hearts. They work hard. They come, they make sure the house is clean, they make sure the restrooms are clean. If there's a problem in the restroom, they usually get it before you see it. And imagine, 800 more people show up. They couldn't handle it. You hear what I'm saying? You know, this morning we had a little problem with some technical stuff, and, and, and we had everything working last night, and, and, and I've been here working with folks until the wee hours. Brother Mike and I were here until one something in the morning, sitting around here. You know, people say, well, yeah, one o'clock in the morning. I'm usually serving the Lord and trying to do something uh, that increases the body of Christ. And I don't mind doing it. Some of you saw me flying the helicopter around here the other day, right? I was on that little machine, got up there, and went up there, and that little lights, and, and helped. And people are like, oh, be careful, Pastor. What, I'm going to jump? I ain't jumping. I'm just up here. I'll be all right. You ought to come up here and ride the helicopter with me. You'll see you like it. Amen. But what am I doing? We need increase. You're technical people. Come on. Get out of where you are and let's come on, get involved. And he said, well, I want to do something. I you, you inspired me. Great. That's what I want to do, inspire you. So when you give me a hug up there uh, at the end of the service, come tell me, I want to serve you. I want to do something. And we're going we're gonna to start pointing you. And we're going to start enlisting you in the army of the Lord. Amen. You, I talked to you, you're, you're a soldier in the Lord. Amen. And, and, and uh, last Wednesday night, I talked about you being a soldier. I'll give you some marching orders. Come on. But what I'm saying is, why, Pastor? Because to increase the body is more than just bringing in people. If we just brought in an extra, you know, 500 cars in the parking lot, our ushers out there, they wouldn't be able to handle it. But as people begin to see how God moves in the church, he gets lives and he helps you to serve others. He said, I want to be like what you are. Do you really? Well, I'll tell you where I served. I served in the children's ministry. That was my first job. I served children. And that I had my class. It was a humble beginning. And I, I teach these kids and I would tell them about Jesus. 
and the Holy Spirit. Of course, they kicked me out of that church not long after that. But anyway, the fact of it is, the fact of it is, church, we got to find our place. If we want to increase, we can't just be, I'm here on Sunday mornings, I hear the word, I walk out the door again, I go home. But I never serve. And, and that's not, it shouldn't be that way. What, but, you know, Pastor, I'm just so busy. Oh, the grace of God and the peace of God will come on you and help you. How can you do all that? It's the grace that, that God increases in my life. Okay? Father, I've given them your word. I've told them the truth, absolute truth, Father. I've not told them a lie. And I pray, dear wonderful Jesus, because I have prayed to you, Father, that you are the Lord of the harvest and that I am your servant. That's all I am. I have nothing without you. But I need increase. We need people to help us. We need people to come alongside and to help us with the technical, help us with the logistics of the ministry. And I pray, Father, for our children's ministry, that more teachers would rise up. And I pray for our ushers. And I pray for our leadership. And I pray for our outreach and soul winning and counseling and teachers around here to teach in the school leaders and so on and so on and so on. You said, ask the Lord of the harvest that he may bring laborers. Now, I believe that you have brought laborers here. Help your people to be inspired, to rise up, and to get into divine positions so that the church physically and numerically can increase as we serve in every area of the church. Now, I pray this, Lord, because only the Holy Spirit can show the hearts of people. I do not condemn them, do not pressure them, but I need them to step up, Lord. We need them to step up and step to the plate and to serve in their church. And when we have served and positioned, then you can bring in 3,000 in one day because we can handle them and love them and serve them. I ask Holy Spirit for an incredible increase this year in the ministry and in the lives of these your people. In Jesus' name, we ask it. All right. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Come on. So, I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to hug you, and I'm going to look at you. I'm not going to say anything about, to you about being late. <laughs> if you were late, you know who you are. We'll look, and we'll go, we, we know. Nothing said. And then next Sunday or next Wednesday, just, just really, man, come on. Come on, we're soldiers, man. Be here on time. Be here before time. Now, I know if you're working and you're getting here, I understand that. I'm talking about Sunday mornings when you're getting up and I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat an extra egg. Oh, no, please. <laughs> Leave the egg alone and come to church. <laughs> Amen. I was on my way here, and I said, I, I should stop by McDonald's. Not that I should, but I, I would go get a cup of coffee, not only. And, uh, and then I said, no, if I do, I'll be late with my guys and meeting them and praying with them. And I just pressed through. And when I got here, David brought a box of donuts. Hallelujah. Amen. And I only had one because I'm watching my slimline figure. Amen. But praise the Lord. I love you. It's a new year. Let's do 2020. Let's do it together. Let's not do the bad things. Let's do the good things. Let's change things. Let's become a mighty force in the land here in La Mesa. And then let's reach San Diego and the surrounding countries, surrounding countries. They'll come here. God will bring them here. I believe that. Come on, let's give a hand. Amen. Is Adrian? Come on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father, for incredible increase. We thank you, Father God, for multiply grace and peace through the knowledge of your word, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, I pray, Father God, that we will continue to read your word. And we thank you, Father God, for increase and multiplication. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Bless your